Hi, and welcome to this quick tutorial for Robyte's all new version of Data Glitch. This new version adds a lot of user control so you can really get down to customizing how the glitch works and make it work just the way you want it to. Let's get right to it. So you apply it from the Robyte menu Data Glitch and you will instantly see that everything is now organized by the kind of glitch. So you have scan glitch, block glitch, offset glitch, and rectangular glitch. So let's go down just sort of in order so you can get a sense of what all the parameters do. So first, we just have glitch count. And this is basically, if you were used to working with the previous version, this is pretty much how it used to work. You used to just sort of turn up the glitch and you get, you know, glitch. You can turn this way up, by the way. This goes up to... A thousand so that's really tons and tons of glitch then let's turn up a little bit so then now in scan type you actually have two kinds of uh, scan so that uh, pertains to the scan glitch by the way which is that why that kind of scan so image applies it to the whole image and strip applies it to each strip individually so that's why the strips are better defined when you have scan type set to strip and then again image and strip. Um, oh, here we go. You can also modify the size of the strip. So if you want to have larger strips, um, you know, smaller strips. So here you can adjust the size of the strip, which is very handy. Now, seed random is what what you know a random seed is just basically um, what kind of randomness it does. So if you have the same effect on two different layers and you want them to be different, or if you just want to change the look of it, you can just change this value. Now, another thing you can do with this value is you can actually keyframe it. So if you wanted to animate the randomness or just animate the way the glitch works, you could just keyframe the seed random. And that will, as you can see, as I just scrub through it, it's just going to give you uh, a cool uh, different glitch effect than if you say we're changing the glitch count because the glitch count you know will make it either more or less glitchy which is another cool thing to animate by the way and now finally here we have the color space so the two options are YUV or RGB most video is produced in YUV color space so things like your cable channels or or if you have a satellite TV or if you say edit um, you know with an offline edit video editing card all of that is most likely going to be in yuv space yuv space prefers the luminance which is the y channel so there's a lot more information in, in in the y channel which is mostly the greenish channel and then the chroma is 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 in the u and v channel so if you wanted to approximate a more realistic glitch to what would happen in real world and say like again a bad satellite transmission or a bad tv signal you probably want to choose YUV, but it also has this RGB color space, which, as you can see here, is very graphic, and uh, it separates the channels into our red, green, and blue, so you can actually get really nice artistic style effects or graphic designy kind of effects, so um, that's a really cool option. Um, under image compression, let's go ahead and reset all this. So if, you, if, you, if you've ever saved a JPEG, uh, you know, you'll get the familiar quality setting. Well, that's what this is. So at quality 100, this is going to re remain at the normal quality size. But as we lower the quality, you're going to start seeing that the image gets more and more compressed. So here, as you can see, when I go really down, it, it, it loses all the color information and it just goes black and white. This is probably not such a good... Um, here we go. Let's go to a close-up so you can probably see it better. So you can see how it just gets all, you know, very typically pixelated. Now, another thing you can do with the image compression is you can apply a map, uh, an image map for it. So let's say, for example, I'm just going to create a circle here. It's just going to create a circle. Now, all image maps need to be in a pre-comp for them to be processed. This is an After Effects thing. This is how all, all plugins work. So I'm just going to go ahead and pre-compose this. I'm going to call this Circle Mat. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off. So now I'm going to assign the circle mat as the image quality map. And you can see here immediately how the inside of the circle is protected and then the outside is compressed. So as I, you know, now I can basically just affect what's in the circle. Now, of course, you probably would never do this unless you're going for the, uh, oh, by the way, this also behaves differently when you have it in RGB mode, just FYI, so that you can actually play with it a little bit differently. 
this might be something you would do for sort of a graphic design thing, but you probably want to do something a little bit more organic. So let's go ahead and turn off the circle map and do, I'm just going to do a, a solid here and I'm going to apply fractal noise and I'm going to change it to block and I'm going to scale it up here. Scale, scale. Yeah. And also simplify the complexity. So let's go to like three and we're going to also improve the contrast. So what's going to happen, as you saw with the circle, the, uh, the white areas is where it's going to be applying the compression and then the black areas is where it's going to not. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with this and pre-compose this and call this fractal. Oh, before we do that, let's go ahead and also animate this. So if we set a keyframe here and then spin this guy around to one revolution, there we go. All right, pre-comp this. When you pre-comp it, you want to make sure that you move all attributes. So we'll call this fractal. <clears throat> Matt. Okay, so now we'll turn this off. So now we're going to go ahead and apply the fractal mat. And again, see here, you can see where it's affecting. And you can bring this down. And so you can see where it's protecting the areas and you can also invert that fractal mat. So as you can see now, you can see that it's using that blocky fractal pattern to create the different compression um, qualities, if you will, in the image. So that could be really handy to create some really cool effects. All right, so now let's go ahead and take out a look at all the individual glitches. And this is what's really big and new in this version is that now you can control each one of the glitches independently. So to make that very clear, we're going to go ahead and zero out all of the other glitches so that we just see what each glitch does is individually. And we'll go ahead and turn this off as well. And here we go. So now you want to turn up the glitch count a little bit so you can see what's happening. And if we go ahead and so again, remember that the scan type applies to the scan, scan glitch. So if we're going to go ahead go to strip here so we can see it a little bit better. And let's go ahead and do 10% on the strip size. Just turn this up. So as you can see here, the, we only have a scan type of glitch. And if you bring this down, you can then bring this to zero or bring this up. And then the amplitude is how bright each one of these glitches is. So if I turn this up, you can really sort of get really intense, um, tense, an intense effect. And again, you can choose whether you want the glitch to be applied to all RGB channels, or maybe you just want to have one of the channels individually. So here it's only being applied to the red channel. Here it'll only be applied to the green channel. And if you're in RGB, I'm sorry, in YUV mode, then the YUV channels are the ones that are going to show up here. So this is again, remember I was saying this is the luminance channel, so you can see here how it actually applies. Now notice that it's also got all the colors. So it, you, again, you're getting to get different effects. So one of the really cool things about I, almost all of the Robite plugins, by the way, is that really they're kind of just fun to play with, right? You don't really need to read the manual. You can just start moving these knobs and you can immediately see really cool effects. So just play around. I mean, that's what I do normally. So, and again, all the channels together. And, um, and then there's RGB. So, uh, oh, and then also you can, here's a, Let's just make this open up. So you got per, per channel seed means that the glitch is applied to each channel individually. If you want it to be applied to all the channels the same way, then you turn this off. And so now it's just doing all the channels the same uh, all together. Again, what, what works best for you? So just play with it, turn it on and off, see what you think works best. So that's scan glitch. So let's go ahead and turn this off, back to zero. And now let's turn up. Block glitch. So block glitch is these little block blocky things. Let's turn up the amplitude on this too, so you can see it. So these little um, little tiny little squares with 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 patterns in them. That's the block glitch. And again, the same thing. How much um, the amount you can keyframe, and then the amplitude is how bright they are. With the block glitch, you can also apply the image map. So let's say, for example, I do my circle mat. It's going to just apply it in the circle mat, or you could obviously invert it as well. So again, that could be a cool little effect. Um, and then same here, you can actually apply it to all channels or each channel individually. So you can start getting kind of a cool effect. And again, the per channel seed will apply it to all of them individually or all, all at the same time. So here again, you can see how the different effects look. So let's go ahead and zero that one out. Now let's go to offset glitch. So if we turn this up, you can see it basically 
offsets the image and slides it over, which is very, very cool. So here we can also intensify or unintensify the, the effect with the amplitude setting. And here, if you actually go on the lower ring of amplitude, you start getting some kind of really cool effects right there. Like, I think this is pretty sweet. It just offsets the channels a little bit. Again, you can switch it from uh, RGB to YUV. And by the way, if you wanted to combine RGB with YUV, just apply the effect twice on two different layers and then use transfer modes to combine them. Uh, you know, After Effects is really great that way. So as you can see here with YUV, um, you get all of the colors. So it's a bit of a different effect. So this is just so this is just a chrominance minus blue, I believe, or chrominance minus red. I, I forget which one's U and which one's V, but you can see it's very subtle because it's just moving off the chrominance. So if you want, if you want to go for just like a subtle effect, like you were, you know, trying to mimic, say, like a transmission from the 1970s or something, you don't have to go full tilt with the glitch. You can just do a little bit. But I kind of like the RGB look here with the all the channels. I think this is a pretty sweet look. Let's go ahead and preview this. Um, again, you can see how, so, so here the, uh, the glitch is just static, right? If I wanted that glitch to be, if I wanted this glitch to be moving, remember I said I can just animate the, the random seed. So if I go to the beginning and I just hit a key from there and then I go to the end and say, may, maybe go to a hundred. So now when I preview this, you're going to see that the glitch is actually going to be animating because the random seed is changing. So let's go ahead and preview this. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, um, continuing down here. Oh, again, uh, I think I showed the per channel, so you can just have it all, which is actually kind of similar to the YUV channel. So again, just play around with that. So let's go ahead, and, and again, you can just really crank this up. And, and you know, all of these things, as you can see, are key frameable, so you can actually go on and off. So, you know, you can go from really scrambled to not scrambled, all of that stuff is pretty cool. I can see some pretty sweet club visuals going on already. All right, so let's go back to zero here. So we go back to our original image. And then finally, the rectangular glitch, which is a pretty, pretty sweet glitch. Um, it's a little bit, imagine like ooh, this one also works really well at low values, I think. So we're going to bring down the amplitude here and let's turn off, let's make this YUV. So let's see, let's bring this up. This is actually, this one I think mimics closest what would happen when your sort of your digital cable TV, the one that has like a thousand channels and they're trying to pack all of this information down this tiny tube and suddenly it gets caught up and, and the buffering starts trying to catch up. It's this rectangular glitch really that it looks like the most. So let's, uh, let me do you a quick preview of this. By the way, notice how you can actually go into the negative with the amplitudes. So you can really um, play with this. So let's go ahead and preview this. So as you can see here, it's just splitting the image up into these rectangles that get offset and moved around. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Again, th th this is really cool for sort of a graphical effect besides having it be a realistic thing. Now, if you wanted to go for a realistic thing, then you just combine a little bit of them all. Um, you can go, so obviously we have the rectangular glitch. Now we can do a little bit of an offset glitch. Uh, we can get a little bit of this blocky glitch. That's too much. Oh, let's take off the mat. Let's just get it a little things all around, a little scan glitch. And so if you wanted to have it come in and out, I can then animate the glitch count, right? So I'm just going to have it there, there, and then I'm just going to have it come down to zero here. And then back up to a whole bunch. Let's just go really high. So let's go ahead and preview that. Um, by the way, I'm doing this on a MacBook Air laptop, which is not a very powerful processor. And you can see how quickly this is processing. This is at full resolution, as you can see here, um, HD. So very quick in rendering. All right, so let's take a look. 
And maybe uh, let's uh, take a look at the keyframes here. Let's maybe make it so that it pauses a little bit longer so you just get in and out of it. I think that the glitch effect works best when you keyframe it kind of coming in and out of the glitch. So you want to have some moments where it's clear and then you go back to it. And then finally, uh, the alpha mode, how you want the alpha to be applied. So in this case, um, well, this doesn't really apply for uh, images that don't have an alpha channel. What, what we'll do is we'll show you, this is also new with the new version of Data Glitches. You can actually apply it to images that have an alpha channel. So the most obvious case for that. Oh, actually, I, would, I should actually show you one cool effect. So we're going to go ahead and reset all of this. And we will create some type that just says Data Glitch. this down a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and pre comp this as well and this is something you could do I could apply that data glitch as the compression for example effect let's go to RGB here uh, it's not inverted So I don't know if you can see there, It's uh, this might not be as obvious. Let's go ahead and um, add the block glitch to it as well. So let's go ahead and bring that up. So let's invert that. There we go. Might be too much. So let's bring this down. Oops. Let's go 10 and then the uh, amount will come down with the amount. And turn off the per channel. No, we kind of like the per channel. Maybe one of the channels. Yeah, we'll leave it on RGB. So here again, you know, we can get this really cool effect with the type that's being, you know, keep in mind that the um, the glitching is based on the image itself. So as you can see here, even though we're going crazy glitch, you can still read the the type because it's using it as a map. So. <laughs> And then finally, you can just use it on the type itself. So we'll go ahead and turn this off and turn back the type and apply data glitch to, to this. So when I turn up the data glitch now, this is a whole new kind of really cool effect that you can do. And again, you can do it in RGB or in thing here. So as you can see, as I turn this up, it really starts messing it up. So this this right here is a really cool sort of effect that you can do in your type. So we'll go ahead and just animate this in from a whole bunch to zero. So preview this. And again, all you know, you could go individually and apply each one of the effects or whatever, but I hope you can see the fun and potential here with just applying it to something with an alpha channel. And of course, you know, here we go. Let's just turn off data glitch and or or like well there you go here you can see you know pretty sweet right so this is a new version of data glitch i'm really excited about it and i hope you are as well thanks